It might feel like history is just in books, but history is all around us. Join us today as we travel around Raleigh and see history come to life. Today, we will be learning about the Methodist Home for Children and what the space looks like today. Today, we'll be asking the following questions. When did the Methodist Home for Children open and who was the first child to live there? What was life like for the children there? What can you see today at the site of the orphanage? Let's find out. Hop on the historic Raleigh Trolley with Sammy the Squirrel and let's explore some of Raleigh's history. The Methodist Home for Children was once located just a few minutes from downtown Raleigh where Fred Fletcher Park is today. It was created as a home for orphan children from all across central and eastern North Carolina. Now originally the site covered about 40 to 45 acres and the site of the orphanage is believed to have once been farmland, part of a plantation called Wills Forest. And the orphanage continued farming on the property until it moved its herds and equipment elsewhere. Now, when designing the campus for the orphanage, they created one large administrative building with many cottages surrounding it, with the goal of making the space and buildings feel more homelike. When did the Methodist Home for Children open, and who was the first child to live there? The Methodist Home for Children, originally called the Methodist Orphanage, opened in 1899, led by Reverend John Wesley Jenkins. The first building, where we are today, is now known as the Borden Building and was built in 1900 as a house for the superintendent and was dedicated on Thanksgiving Day. Now it was not until January 7th, 1901 that the first child, Cassie Bright, was brought to the orphanage when she was only 11 years old. The local newspaper stated that the name Bright was a great sign for the future of the orphanage, which proved to be very true. Eventually, 27 other children would join Cassie, all from the ages of 6 to 14. Born in 1825, Margaret Mordecai Devereux grew up at the nearby Mordecai House, which is preserved today at Mordecai Historic Park. And in 1842, Margaret married John Devereux Jr. The couple owned a plantation near Wills Forest. A large portion of the land was purchased by Reverend Jenkins and the city of Raleigh from Margaret for $3,800 and would later become the Methodist Home for Children and today Fred Fletcher Park. What was life like for the children at the orphanage? In the early 1900s, orphanages were not typically known for being homey or even healthy. But the Methodist Home for Children vowed that for their campus and the children, it would be different. From the design of the buildings, to social opportunities and education, their goal was to help the kids living there reach their potential. Many of the photos we have today show their activities, including celebrating Halloween, Christmas, and even May Day, which celebrated the changing of the seasons from spring to summer. Kids would help take care of the younger children, help with cooking, and even take care of the pigs and cows raised on the property. The children occasionally attended events nearby off campus, with one woman remembering seeing John Philip Souza's band. A baseball team was formed, who played at the local baseball field, Devereux Meadow, against other institutions. And eventually tennis courts, athletic fields, and even a roller skating rink were built here on the campus. What can you see today at the site of the orphanage? While the Methodist Home for Children closed its doors at this location in 1971, the work continued on. Their focus continued to be on creating group homes and placing children with foster families. By their 100th anniversary in 1999, 
the institution had 18 group homes in eastern North Carolina and had even become licensed as an adoption agency with thousands of children having been given a home through their efforts. Today, you can still visit the original site here in Raleigh and see two of its historic original buildings. Fred Fletcher Park hosts the Borden Building, where we are now, and the Garris Building, seen here in the background in the 1950s. The Borden Building was a superintendent's house, and today is used for programs, events, summer camps, and even weddings. The park has walking trails, gardens, a playground, athletic fields, and even a water garden that naturally filters stormwater. Walking the park today, you can almost see the rows of cottages lined up next to the Borden Building. There were once homes to so many children through the years. Today, we learned about the Methodist Home for Children and when it was founded. We also learned about the first child to live there and what life was like for the other children at the orphanage. Then, we also got to see what the orphanage site looks like today. Explore more history with the activity in the description below. Thanks for exploring Raleigh history with us. See you next time.